Hello, hello. Welcome. I am so excited to finally be filming again. Um, it's been a minute. I took a little, a couple of weeks off in December to reorient my life. Uh, I was working and then I had Christmas through New Year's off, which was great very much needed. I was ready to come back in January, uh, but on January 2nd, I got sick. I got a really bad cold, tested negative for COVID, so it wasn't that, but it was, I was down bad. I had the worst sinus pressure ever. I think it was, I think it's just going around. So stay healthy, guys. Pick up your meds, pick up your tissues, <laughs> just in case. Um, I've bought so much medication. The only thing that helped me was Tylenol, but I was pushing the limit. I was very ill last week, and the last couple of days I have felt way better, and I've been wanting to come back. So, I thought I would hop on the train of the gifts haul show and tell from the holidays because I've been wanting to do that and it sort of got delayed. So this might be kind of like old news, old trend at this point, but consider it the latest items that I got and I want to share them with you. And then towards the end, I would like share my 2024 goals with you. I'm very excited. I hope you all are doing well. I have missed posting and I think the universe, you know, I got my Christmas through New Year's off and I like was ready to go back to work and hop into ASMR again. And the universe was like, no. You are going to get sick and rot on the couch all day. And I will say, I, I finally feel energy again and motivation. So I think I really needed those two weeks. And uh, unfortunately, one of them, I was sick. So I wish I wouldn't, wasn't, had been sick, but I think in a way I needed that, if that makes sense. I'm going to stop chatting and get into the fun parts, <laughs> which are all the items that I have received. Um, well, not all of it. I think it's just, I just kind of picked out the things that I felt I wanted to share. I think I'm going to start off with everyone's favorite type of gift, or at least my ultimate favorite type of gift, which are books. So, I got one, two, three, four books. The first book that I have is Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I love Allie Hazelwood. Um, I've read and I have the Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain. I have those two books from her, and I think there's another book I want to read as well, but I guessed for this one. Just love a good, comfy, romantic story with a little bit of spice. So I feel like these are really quick reads, and I find that sometimes when I'm reading fantasy and it's like a lot of chaos, or emotions. I like to read something in tandem or something soon after. I call it the palate cleanser of just cozy feelings, low stakes. So really enjoying these types of books. And Allie Hazelwood is also, in my opinion, a good writer. I, I appreciate it. just like the way she writes. And I find it funny too. So super excited to read this. 
along the cozy, romantic, um, spicy books. I picked up Wildfire via my Christmas <laughs> gifts. Um, I also love Hannah Grace. I have Icebreaker. I actually got Icebreaker last Christmas, so it was only, you know, meant to be. <laughs> and I just really love, really love the spice. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so I'm excited for this. <laughs> so this is, I think, based on a character who was featured in the Icebreaker book, so I would say read that one to kind of have a better understanding of characters and kind of get familiar with them, but it's not the same main characters as the other book. It's a different character and it's their point of view. And I believe this is based on like a summer camp. We shall see how it goes, but um, yeah, I'm excited. And again, another kind of cozy palette cleanser between more dense, dense stuff. I have been really getting into books this like last month and I've just missed reading so much, so I've just felt inspired and motivated to get back into reading and for Christmas I always ask for books because I love doing that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been reading a lot lately and I'm excited to be back into it a little bit more. Okay, this next one is more like fantasy romance and I'm so excited. It's What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. Beautiful, beautiful cover art. I just love it. Um, so this is like a historic, I don't know if it's like historical. It says this book is the mummy meets death on the Nile in this lush, immersive, historical fantasy filled with adventure, arrivals to lovers, romance, and shocking twists and turns. When I saw a TikTok that said this was kind of like inspired by the mummy, the movie, which is all time favorite favorite movie. Love that movie. That movie has romance dialed in. It is very much something I'm looking forward to reading. Um, I have a lot of books I want to get through in January, and I don't know that I'm going to get to this one, so I might save this for February. We'll see. Okay, last book that I got. Um, fourth Wing. I have not read this yet. Okay. And I put it on my list, and then after I put it on my list and like shared it with my husband, who is the one who got me some of these gifts, um, the second book came out, and then people were saying the second book was just like very different, or it just was like very long, and there's just a lot of opinions about it. It didn't seem collectively though. A lot of people loved the second book versus the first book. So now I'm like, oh no, am I gonna even like the series? But I figured if I read the series, I might as well have the first book. I can always give it away if I don't like it, donate it, that kind of thing. Um, and then maybe I'll read the second one. I'll rent it or whatever. Maybe, maybe I'll buy it. I don't know. It kind of stinks because you just don't know sometimes with how series turn out. Sometimes, like, you like certain books in a series more than others. Like, for me, for Akatar, my favorite Akatar books are number two and number five, so A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of, um, Silver? Something Silver? <laughs> I'm, like, blinking. Um, the latest Akatar book with Nesta's point of view. Those two were my favorite books, but it's like number two and number five or something like that. So, um, in the series. So I, it's not like, you know, I need every book in the series to be my favorite, but if I like the entire series as a whole, I don't mind owning every book. Um, but we'll see how this turns out. The rest of the world also <laughs> seems to be waiting. Um, but I feel like a lot of people enjoyed the first one, so... I'm excited to read the first one. A little concerned about the second one. <laughs> but this 
is, of course, fantasy, um, has dragons, all that good stuff. I feel like a lot of people probably already know the premise of this book, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but, um, we'll see. Yeah, so that is the last physical book that I got for Christmas. The next item I got, this was a, like, secret Santa gift to my family. Um, just like a secret Santa where we pick a name from a family for a family member and we get them a Christmas gift So my secret Santa was my brother-in-law and of course we shared In like an email thread, you know what we want and one of the things I asked for was this mug warmer for like your desk um, At my day job it is freezing cold kid you not all all year long and I even have a heater at my desk because I'm cold. Like, it's, you know. Uh, so, when making coffee, a lot of the time, the coffee goes really cold quickly um, because it's just so cold in there. And so, I asked for kind of like a mug warmer. And this one is where you just kind of set it down and it will warm the mug. Um, and it will keep it at a specific temperature, I think. It's really interesting. Um, so that it's not too hot or anything like that. Speaking of coffee, I asked for a, um, new coffee tumbler. I do have one from Hydro Flask. It's like a mug, but it's very large. It doesn't fit in my cup holder in my car, uh, which I don't really need it to. But I also wanted another mug because I'm trying to make more homemade coffee and I feel like travel mugs, I just don't have very many of them for hot coffee. I have plenty of tumblers for iced coffee. So because it's colder and I'm enjoying hot coffee more, I thought I would just get another one. And this is from Simple Modern. It's, you know, the logo there. And it's like this sage green, which I love this color. Um, so it's really nice because it's small, um, it fits in the cup holder, it is 12 ounces, which is the same amount of ounces as my Hydro Flask mug, but the Hydro Flask mug is just wider and shorter. So um, this is like still great and we have a Nespresso machine at my job, so I just make an espresso, add some creamer, and that's kind of my coffee. I'm still experimenting with creamers and syrups that I enjoy. I often go for, like, zero sugar style stuff when I can, um, or sometimes I just like milk, like, just a basic milk splash, and I use, like, Splenda as a sweetener kind of thing. This is the kind of like top. It's pretty secure. It like screws in. Although I don't think you should be like, you know, moving it around like that. Um, so yeah, it looks like that. So. So. I always say that the one of the awesome things to get for Christmas is a video game. I didn't actually ask for a game this year, but my husband is very nice and got me um, the Hogwarts game, Hogwarts Legacy for Switch. I tend to play on the Switch and I like a farm game, Stardew Valley, um, you know, all that good stuff. I am actually currently playing the Super Mario or, yeah, Super Mario Origami game um, on the Switch, so I'm excited to play this one. Um, I didn't start playing it in the last few weeks, but I'm hoping to in the next couple weeks. And I am a Ravenclaw, in case anyone wanted to know. <laughs> so my character is going to be Ravenclaw. At least I think you get to choose your character's house and like how they look. I'm debating whether or not to be good or I wish there was a morally gray area. That would be really fun. And I don't know. Let me know if you prefer a side. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm excited to play this and I'm glad to add it to my collection. 
I always feel like a video game is a nice thing to get for the holidays and you can play it throughout the year um, if you don't play too much, which I don't really have a ton of time to play all the time but uh, yeah, it was a nice surprise to get this Alright, this next gift is something I really wanted and my husband got it for me I actually wanted a different wallet but it ran out of stock of the color I wanted so I put this one as like the option too just in case that happened which it did but I'm totally fine with it and love this wallet just as much so it's coach which this is my first coach item ever <laughs> um and honestly I'm loving coach I really want the tabby like shoulder bag um it's pricey though so um I asked for a wallet because I felt like that was doable um as a gift from someone else and then maybe like a big purchase for a bag would be like a super I guess like special occasion my birthday or celebrating something important so I got the, uh, I'm, I think it's the slim card case. I'm gonna link it below just in case. Um, and it's black smooth leather with gold hardware. I love coach stuff right now. I just feel like it's very on point. So this is what it looks like. It's not, I would say, super thin like a card, you know very slim card thing which I do want to get but I wanted like a proper wallet I've had this Target wallet for like almost 10 years and it was time to upgrade okay so I got this big girl wallet um, and it opens up like this and I actually don't have my like credit cards in it right now because I took it out of my bag for some random errand that I did a nice slot here, one back here, which you could put like, you know, dollar bills, which I do think I have some. I have like an old navy coupon there. And then you have a couple of card like slots, which it, they're not that many, but to be honest, I don't like hoarding a lot of cards, so I like this amount. Kind of keeps me accountable um, to keep it clean. There is a coin purse kind of slot, which is nice. Um, I don't know that you need to put coins in there. You could put anything in there, like other paper or maybe dollar bills. I don't really carry change with me a lot, so I don't really know that that's going to be what I use it for. And then on the back, you just have another, you know, little slot section. Um, and then, of course, there's another compartment. So, lots of compartments. One of my favorite gifts I got this year. So happy with it. So, me and my sister's birthdays are actually in December. And um, we exchanged gifts on Christmas, though. Um, so, I gave her her present. Um, and she gave me my present. And the present she gave me is this a beautiful watch. And it's by Citizen. I believe that's what it's by. Um, and uh, my brother-in-law had like a sizing watch thing. I think the most annoying thing about watches is you have to go get it sized even after you buy it. Like if you get a gift, you have to go and size your watch, which is just very interesting. Because um, it's like an extra step. But thankfully he had like a kit to like size it and so he sized it to my wrist put it on right now and so it fits perfectly and it's just so beautiful I've been wanting another watch for a while and I just feel like this is perfect yeah super happy about it um so thanks to my sister shout out to you I love it and yeah so that was like a birthday gift, but in December. <laughs> I 
didn't actually ask for any jewelry um, this year. I think I just didn't, I couldn't think of anything. Or if I did, it was like too expensive compared to other things I was asking for that I would prefer to have. So I just didn't have jewelry on my list with like my husband and I. Um, but he ended up giving me a couple things and he knows this brand I really love. It's called Little Rooms. I don't know if you can see the, the words there. Uh, Little Rooms is like an LA-based jewelry brand and I think it's owned by a couple and she makes or they make really beautiful jewelry that's very like quirky I have a couple pieces already um, when I was first starting out wearing the kind of jewelry I wanted to wear I really wanted to wear a lot of rings I'm not actually wearing any of theirs right now but I wanted to keep it simple today but when first wanting to experiment with rings I bought a ton of little rooms or asked for a lot of little room jewelry so uh, the first thing he got me which is something I think I had on a wish list a long time ago and he remembered are these earrings so there's another one exactly like it but this is the earring this woman floating in space kind of thing Pretty and like ethereal space girl vibes. I just love stuff like this. I feel like it adds a little zest sometimes to an outfit. I just love funky pieces and clearly I love space a lot. So I, had, I love um, these types of like jewelry. So she has a lot of stuff like this, a lot of quirky jewelry. Next item, it's actually like a little ear cuff with like a little um, gem in the center. So that's what it looks like. Very tiny, so it kind of like something like that. Like that's how it's supposed to kind of sit. Maybe I'll just wear it for the rest of the video. But yeah, I love it. I love little ear cuffs. Um, I don't have multiple piercings. I wish that I did, but I'm just very lazy and have not prioritized it. So I'm going to share some clothing items. I got this scarf from my brother-in-law, the Secret Santa. And I really wanted something that was like cream, neutral color, and also just kind of like you know, thin enough to like be malleable. I ha I have like one other scarf. I don't really have any scarves. Um, so I thought for the winter time, this would be just like a nice thing to have. And it's timeless because it's very, you know, neutral. I have really been wanting bomber jackets. So I asked for a bomber kind of style jacket for my secret Santa and I think it was on Black Friday sale so it was pretty good pricing. Um, it's from it's from the brand Automat um, from Amazon. I haven't taken it off yet. I haven't been able to go anywhere because I've been sick so but I'm super excited to style it and wear it out. It's really nice. thin but still gives the essence of being a little bulky without being too much if that makes sense or too warm and I live in a climate where it's cold but it's not like really cold um, so this is a great kind of jacket to have so yeah the only thing is it's a size large and I feel like it's a bit big for me like I could have gone with the medium the reviews I read it was hard to, to kind of decide if I should do a medium or large to kind of get the oversized look I want but I think I should have gone with the medium 
This next jacket I really wanted and I asked for it on my like main Christmas list for my husband and he got it for me. It's by Elfric Eden, which is a popular brand. Um, also a size large. Could have gone a size smaller. Um, it was very difficult to decide. But it's like a, I call it like a racer jacket. Like a car racing jacket kind of thing. It's got these patches on them. These, uh, these jackets in like vintage stores, you know, authentic ones are so expensive. So I was like, I'm not that kind of girl. I'm okay with not the real thing. And it's super cute. I really like it. feels like it's kind of bruised. 
slash tight and so I think it meant that I wasn't stretching enough on my foot. All that being said, I was Christmas Eve thinking, okay, maybe I should invest in some new workout shoes. I've had the same pair of shoes for a long time and those shoes can run out, like run down over time. They were just kind of a basic pair of Nike free runs. Again, I've had them for like five plus years and I've been working out a lot in them and I think maybe they they just needed to be switched out. So I was actually online browsing, window shopping for maybe a new pair of you know, sneakers for exercise, but I didn't buy anything because I was like, I, you know, I don't know if I want to buy anything right now. Maybe after the holiday is over. Well, lo and behold, Christmas morning, Santa, aka my husband, um, gave me my Christmas wish and he actually got me a pair. He had already bought me a pair of new workout shoes and these are Nike uh, free runs. So they're basically like the same pair of shoes I had, but like a new pair. Um, so they are these gray and white ones. And I'm, I was just like, this is exactly what I needed. I needed a new pair of shoes. And so I just was really thankful that he had thought about it and like decided to get me new ones. And I'm just really excited. I'm trying to be like more into exercise at home and in general, so I just really think these are a great new addition to, you know, continuing that routine that I've set up for myself. So, got the Nike logo. They are great. I will say I'm a size 8. They do feel a little tight. I don't know if that just means I'm breaking them in or, I don't know, I had to really loosen laces. I think my feet are kind of wide, so I don't know if that's what it is, but yeah, I still like them. I still work out in them. I don't think they are hurting my feet. I think what's hurting my feet is the fact that I was working out with old shoes and I wasn't stretching a lot, and so I'm trying to be better about that. I feel like this Christmas has been a wonderful, like, I don't know, fulfilling Christmas wishes, things that I really wanted and needed. Um, so I was just talking about how I wished I had new exercise shoes and my husband went out and had already bought some for me. Um, and then on Christmas, I was spending time with my family and my sister was saying how she'd accidentally gotten two workout sh pairs of shoes, one for herself, but she had accidentally bought two of them. And she was asking me and my mom if we wanted the other pair because she didn't want to return it. So I was like, oh, I'll try it on. She's a size nine. So I was like, I don't know if it's going to fit me, but I'll try it. Lo and behold, they fit me. And I'm now wondering if I'm a size nine in workout shoes. But she said she got these because they are wide. And I think that's kind of why I somehow magically fit into them. We called it like the sisterhood of the traveling shoe instead of the traveling pants that fit all the girls. It's like the shoe that fits the sisters. <laughs> so these are the shoes. They are Asics. I don't know specifically which ones, but uh, they are Asic. They are so comfortable. They're a little bit chunkier than the other pair, and I like the other pair for the bike, but this is nice for like going out, maybe going on walks. It just feels really comfortable. It's breathable, like you can feel the air going through, um, and it's like just super comfortable. I was super surprised. So, I really love these and it was like a Christmas miracle. Now I have two pairs of workout shoes and I don't have to go out and buy any. So this next item is probably one of my favorite gifts I got this year. It's very much 
maybe at the top, really up there, it is a Kindle. And I actually have a Kindle, but it's from like 2010 or something like that. Like it, I got it back in high school and that is an old Kindle. I had to do a weird kind of update just to make sure it could even upload books anymore. And I was like, I don't want to have to deal with this in the future. So even though it technically works, it's just super old and I wanted to advance update and get a new one. So this is my new Kindle. And um, I got the Kindle Paperwhite so you can kind of adjust the brightening settings. I love it so much. I ended up buying the case separately because I didn't know if I was going to get a Kindle and I didn't know what kind of case I wanted, so I didn't ask for a case. Um, so once I got this Kindle, I immediately ordered a case. I got this one. <laughs> it looks like a little journal. I just love stuff like this. Um, I had a Kindle with like a basic black cover, but I was like, I want to do something a little different. And I wasn't really into the like pop socket ones because I like that. I can just throw this in my bag. My work bag or my purse and it's protected and then it has a little like slip so you can prop it up oh you know what this is it's a stand i totally forgot it's a stand uh which is really hilarious because i've been using a phone stand to prop this up when i needed to and totally forgot that I had ordered this with the stand already. So now, now I remembered. But yeah, isn't that cute? So, I mean, it has everything I'm, I needed to do. So I'm super excited. And I have been reading so much on this ever since Christmas. I started flying through some of the books on my uh, shelf that I wanted to read because I'm finally on vacation and I can read um, and then when I got the Kindle for Christmas I immediately dove into the uh, Stuff Your Kindle event so it's like a couple of days throughout the year where they do Stuff Your Kindle with free books you can download it's only certain books and Amazon, you know, you could go on Amazon, find it and download these books for free I downloaded so many books, like so many books. I have like 30 plus books in here and a lot of them are like book one of a series. So for me, if I like a book and it's in a series, I want to get the next book. So technically you have to like buy the second or third books. But I feel like this is a great way to find indie books, try them out, see if you like a series. And it's like the first book is free, but if you love it, then you can go buy and support, you know, by buying the books, book two, three, whatever. So I just have all these books. So check out, you know, stuff your Kindle, stuff your e-reader events throughout the year on different websites or whatever, because they are amazing. I got a ton of like uh, contemporary romance kind of stuff, a lot of fantasy and spicy, spicy stuff. So very excited. I am still a hardcore love a physical book girl, but the problem is <laughs> I'm running out of space. Like physically, our home is a one bedroom um, and it's not very spacious even for just two people. And so I am really trying to consider the things I'm bringing into my home now because I physically don't have the space. Um, I'm all for piling up books everywhere, but there is kind of like a limit for right now. Um, so for me, I am just really excited to have a Kindle to pour as many books as I want and then I can purchase physical books depending on, you know, if it's cheaper to buy the physical copy used 
or maybe I have some space or I really love the series and I really want to buy the physical version, I'll probably do that. But Kindles are really great and I feel like I'm reading so much with it and it's great for travel so I'm just so glad I fell back in love with the Kindle. I have joined Goodreads, I have a reading goal, it's a modest 30 books for the year which I'm hoping to overcome that like by a bit um, so I am super excited and I would love to do more like book sharing like what I've what I'm reading type of videos I feel like I've been reading a lot of popular books though so I feel like I'm not really sharing anything unique but I love um, Haley Jean ASMR hi if you're watching I really love your channel um, she does a lot of book ASMR videos where she talks about books of the month that she's read and a lot of other ASMR artists do it too so I actually kind of want to try it maybe for January, like the end of this month I'll do what books I read if I feel like I have enough or well, maybe I'll do it, you know, based on I don't know, whatever, whatever other book ideas I have but I do love reading it's always been a hobby of mine um, I don't know that I'm like quite up there with like a book talk connoisseur kind of thing um, but I do love books and I would love to create content with that as well maybe sharing things that I've read and my thoughts I don't know, so we'll see but the Kindle has been awesome and I just look forward to reading as much as possible whenever I can so this gift I asked for is the Artist of Life workbook by Lavendaire. She's also a creator um, and she's been around for a while and she actually created this a couple years ago and I got it, I want to say I got it back in like 2020 era but entering 2024 I just felt that I wanted to kind of pick it up again, reevaluate cer certain things yeah, like the last few years have been sort of survival mode for me. My husband got in a really bad car accident almost two years ago and I kind of, I had dreams, I had ideas, we had dreams, but we had to really put those things on hold for him to heal and recover and he's fine now but he was in the hospital for like a full week and it was very traumatic so um, we needed time to just live and you know take day by day and the first thing I really focused on was getting a dog so I got my dog Chewy and I spent a year sort of settling in with him and now I feel like I have the space and capacity to think about the future a little bit more and I have the energy and the motivation to do that but I will say it's not always like that every year so if you're entering 2024 and you feel like you're in survival mode or you're not thinking too far ahead in the future and you just want to think about the present moment or even just the next day and that's it that's fine because we're all in different phases and sometimes you just need time to settle in focus on healing and being where you're at and then there's other seasons and years where you prepare and idealize and plan for the future um, it's hard for me because I can't see too far into the future like I don't really have like a five ten year plan um, for a lot of things I think I'm in a place of discovery right now and exploration and I want it to be fun I want it to be lighthearted so this kind of workbook is great because it goes through sort of the deep stuff before you start like planning for things throughout the year and I feel like a lot of these things aren't really they don't need to be within a year it could be years of working on the same things so it's not meant to feel like you're supposed to achieve a ton of stuff by 2024 it's meant to be like okay here's all the things you want to do what can you do day by day, month by month to get closer to that so that at some point in time you do have that thing you want or that thing you've accomplished or whatever so it's reflecting on like 2023 I've written a lot of stuff so I don't want to share 
too much, but um, yeah, it's just a really great workbook. You know, it has really great pages like Dream Life, um, what your best year looks like. It goes into like, you know, like health and relationships, different categories, you know, like career, personal growth. I've already filled out a lot of this, so it's honestly been a really good exercise for me because I'm evaluating where I'm at and what I want and if I'm really doing things every day to give myself the best life I can have um, realistically. It helps you kind of like focus on just a couple goals for the year, which I find really helpful because, you know, there's a difference between goals and then like bucket list items, so they kind of separate that a little bit, which is nice. It kind of helps you talk about your values and like what you're passionate about, which I always feel like is a good thing to kind of check in on every now. There are just some really good nuggets and questions that it helps guide you through and there are just some things that I was able to remind myself like I deserve to enjoy life in the best way possible or you know life has more to offer me and I deserve to experience that or I can be open to what it has to offer. I think a lot of the time I have felt like this inability to open up because of inviting things I don't want in my life or, you know, just feeling stuck where I'm at because I can't see a way forward or a way out. There are some mantras that I want to remind myself throughout this year though because they help me refocus on, at the end of the day, this is what can help me get where I need to go. So for example, starting somewhere is better than stuck and doing something is better than nothing. And that just helps remind me that it's the little day-to-day -day decisions that can help me move forward on the goals that I want, the things that I want. It's not about like this aggressive and like overwhelming task. It's about what can I do in my routine, my day-to-day, -day, and invest in to help me move forward, at the very least. And then I might discover things along the way that inform me of, oh, I said I wanted this, but actually now I want this. Or, oh, you know, a perfect example is I never thought about making ASMR until I had a therapy session and my therapist asked me if I thought about making it myself because I love it so much. That question where she was like, why don't you try it? And I was suddenly like, why not? There's nothing I can lose. And it ended up being this beautiful channel that has helped me feel so alive and I'm so grateful for it. Now I get to look back on that experience and think, if I hadn't opened myself up to that possibility, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. It's always starting out, you know, somewhere rather than remaining stuck. And it's always starting with something rather than nothing. Because uh, you just never know where you'll, where you'll end up. I want to get into some of the goals that I have for myself this year that I would share with you. I am into goals and resolutions, but I also feel like a lot of these things go year to year, so it's nice to focus on something. And actually this past year, it was in February when I decided I wanted to work on my health and fitness, and it took a long time, but I have been able to see results from that decision that I made in February and it makes me really proud that I stuck with it and I've changed certain things for the better and I feel positive about that. So the theme of my 2024 is actually positive change, positive change that I initiate. So just kind of believing that everything is for me and for good and for positivity. One of my first goals, which all of these are important to me, but this is a big one. This is probably one of the top ones, is finishing writing one of my books that I've written. 
it's halfway done right now and I just need to write the rest of it and the first draft will be done. I feel like it's very doable and I could absolutely finish it this year. Um, so that is a number one goal. Contemporary urban fantasy romance, uh, which I would love for it to be a series. And, um, yeah, I love it. I just, I even have the outline done and I just need to sit down and write. So a part of achieving this goal is going to figure out how to put writing into my daily life or weekly routine to carve in that time and get it done so that I can like move that forward. My next goal is saving money and I do have a specific number. I already have things that I'm thinking of of how to achieve that both by adding more income potentially slash saving and living within my means and so I'm working on it I'm truly trying to be more just intentional with my money overall and also saving. Saving for things that I know I'm going to want in the near future or in the next couple years. Um, my next goal is focusing on my health and my strength. I already have a routine and I think it's just really leveling that routine up. So incorporating more different variety of exercises. I do home workouts. Also continuing to work on my diet and just make sure that that's in a good place. Another goal of mine is reading more, which I already mentioned. Um, I signed up for Goodreads so that I could see like the number of books I want to achieve. And I even saved a bunch of books that I want to read. I feel like all of that helps me feel like I can track things and like every time I finish a book I can like say that I finished it and it's just very satisfying to see it build upon itself while also enjoying the fact that I'm reading more which is what I really love so it's really nice I think these types of challenges such as like a reading challenge do help keep you motivated but you have to kind of want to see that result. If you feel obligated, it's not probably going to be the best. So for me, I'm excited about it and it makes me feel motivated. Okay, and last but not least, my last goal is growing my ASMR channel. And by growing, I mean leveling up what I've already built. You can't really control who sees your video, right? I can't control how many followers I get in a quick amount of time. But what I can control is my content and my consistency. I'm trying to brainstorm and consider other things that would help, again, level up this channel and I'm open to what that looks like and what where I need to explore a bit more. But I do have to be realistic about the fact that I have a full-time job right now and this is like a second job, so I have to be really balanced. I can end up really overdoing it. <laughs> so I want to be really aware of what I can realistically achieve. And for me, it's also about thinking about what kind of content my audience likes and focusing a lot more on that. So let me know what kind of content you love or what you've seen or what you've thought about, but know that I'm also kind of thinking through what I can bring to the table this year. I'm excited for the opportunities ahead and just where this will go. And um, yeah, everything from like equipment to content ideas, I don't know, just like a variety of different things I'm thinking about for my channel and how I can make it even better for my viewers and for myself too. I will say an overall goal, which isn't really, there's no really specific number or result I'm thinking of for it, but I'm hoping it's at the end of this year, I'll have more clarity on certain areas of my life that I just feel stuck on. And I'm planning to work on that and be in a state of discovery and exploration. But I feel like I'm starting at ground zero. <laughs> with this air, this one particular area I'm thinking of, but I'm hoping by the end of this year I'll have more clarity on my direction and my next steps 
and that everything I think about doing in the next couple months or year lead me closer to that clarity. And you know what? At the end of the day, I'm just remaining open to, again, positive change and opportunities because I wanted to remind myself that I deserve a good life. I deserve a beautiful life. I deserve to fight for the things that I want and um, it's not really material things. It's more like experiences and the kind of life I'm living. Also, I'm just getting older, so now I have even more information on what that kind of life looks like. So that's kind of where I'm at and I've been very chatty in this video. So I'm sorry if it's been incredibly long, but I've been so excited to come back and chat with you. One of the things that has come to my mind, uh, which I don't know if people care about this, but seeing my face. I hide my face for ASMR videos because I like that style and I still will continue to do it, but I thought I would ask if you stuck to the end and you're a true VIP of this channel kind of thing, do you want to see more of my face? Does it not really matter? Or what content do you enjoy that you would like to see? And let me know uh, what you want to see more of. I appreciate all the love and ideas in the past year, the past couple years. You are all truly wonderful. I am so grateful for all of you. And I've missed you, so I'm glad to be back. Very, very soon.